how are you doing? This is a demonstration of using a serial to parallel um, integrated circuit. The advantages of such a device is if you're using it with a microcontroller such as an Arduino, you can control 8, 16, whatever number of lines or outputs, in this case LEDs, with only two input lines. Looking at the uh, center of the video, the 74C164 is a 16-pin integrated circuit right there. This is attached to a row of eight LEDs. It has a clock input, it has a data input, and it will transfer this data in a binary sequence to the eight LEDs shown here. Down here is a logic pulser that I built. Uh, that's for another video before I go over that. That gives me two clean square wave outputs. Let's go ahead and power this up. You notice that the LEDs come on. One of the switches, which is sort of a little bit off to the left, is a resets, is a clear switch. That's one of the three pins going into the uh, 164 would be clock, data, and clear. On this particular end, we're looking here. The yellow LED is going to be my clock. The green LED is going to be my data. Clock, data. That is, if I have if you see the LED on, that's a digital one, and it's going to be shifted in from left to right. So if I have a one and I clock it in with the yellow, there it is. Now I can, if the LED, green LED is off, it's a zero, and if I clock it on, I can walk the data bit clean through the device until it falls off into cyberland somewhere. Again, you can also, by using the data and clock, you can put in a pattern. And you can keep walking it through. A number of electronic devices use variations of a serial protocol to have a microcontroller communicate with, with the assorted device. These include temperature controllers, these include real-time clocks, these include drivers and special chips for driving, for example, LED displays such as that shown here. We'll see. look into this a little bit later. But all I need to do is I can clock in any code pattern that I want. Okay, picture here is my uh, earlier proto board with the 74C164 serial to parallel converter. It's still connected to the LEDs, but in this case, I've connected this to a microchip pick. It's a 16F84A that I have programmed to input serial data into the above chip and LED array. To uh, It's going to look like you're just counting in binary from right to left. Before I power it up, we're going to go ahead and zoom in on the LEDs. 
In this case, it's going to be counting in binary from right to left. It's going to be clocked in so fast that you won't see the slow crawl that you saw earlier when I was doing it with manual switches. Well, let's see what it looks like. And I'm managing to control all of these LEDs with two lines. Um, and I have the exact same code for an Arduino as I do a microchip pick. Um, the only difference is, is the microchip pick I've been using is programmed in assembly. Uh, and while somewhat more difficult to program than I suppose the C used in Arduino, the code is much more efficient and runs faster. And in many ways, the uh, microchip picks are somewhat easier to hook up than Arduino, but they all have their advantages and disadvantages, and you'll see it'll go all the way to zero and start over. Like I said, if you could look close enough, you can barely see the LEDs that are off. You would see a real brief, almost imperceptible flash either though the data is being clocked in from uh, left to right, the LEDs are counting from right to left. It doesn't matter. All I have to do is change a slight bit of the coding and I could have it counting from uh, left to right instead of right to left. Or I could have um, put in a binary pattern, for example, if I chose to with uh, the LEDs being uh, bits being completely inverted. You would see the binary pattern in the LEDs that are off and they would gradually um, all come on. They would do the exact opposite pattern here. That's the great part of this. You can alter the uh, bit patterns any way you want to. In this case we have a simple binary pattern. But what if we could do something a little bit better with this pattern? Um, what if we could hook up an LED display? An LED display is nothing more than a collection of eight LEDs that form an eight and a decimal point. Let's find out if that will work. Okay, what is pictured here is our same binary pattern that we have before, but I have connected in an LED display driver board. Now the driver board here has no decoding as such, and the eight inputs for the LED display are paralleled with the eight bits on the LEDs to the right. Let's focus in a little bit better on this. The integrated circuit in the lower left corner is nothing but a display driver, some resistors, and I got four transistors to drive the four different displays by using multiplexing. I'm not concerned with the multiplexing as such here, um, but you see as we're just using a regular binary count, this is just, uh, as far as the display goes, is garbage. Um, so let's load in the proper code to count from 0 to A in hex, uh, that is A 0 through F in hexadecimal. Alright, pictured here is I'm actually loading in a pattern that will give me a true count on from 0 through F in hexadecimal on our display. Well, let's, as you can see, the pattern in digital talk on the right, as far as bits go, looks like gibberish. But when we look at our LED display, which we're going to zoom in on, we're going to get a count from 0 through F in hexadecimal. Again, it's a matter of 
simply programming the correct bits, the correct digital polarity in 1 and 0, and some timing loops. Um, I've got the same program for Arduino as I'm using with the microchip pick here. Pretty much the same thing, except I'm using about 70 byte, bytes or 70 bytes or so with the microchip pick, or I can use 1,500 bytes with the Arduino. That, again, that's the difference between programming and assembly, which is faster and more efficient, but perhaps harder to do on higher level stuff than it is C++ of the Arduino. Uh, I like assembly because it's similar to what I used to use in a Kim 1 that I owned back in the 70s. Understanding that both the Arduino is core, the AT Mega 168, and the PIC series of chips are all RISC processors, that is, reduced instruction set computer. A microchip PIC, for instance, only has out 35 commands to memorize. So it's not as horrible as it might seem, either though it can be a little more tricky to program sometimes. So the idea here is not Arduino or microchip, but how to use a serial shift register. As I said, this is some good electronics to learn, and studying the uh, programming is a good way to learn electronics. Remember, my point in the whole series here is to learn electronics. I'm not selling a particular microcontroller. That's really up to the individual. What I dislike somewhat about pre-assembled pre code and programs is, yeah, it's easy for you to hook up. You can get it running, and you don't know what it's doing. Then what if you ended up with a different part? What I'm saying is you have to understand the electronics to really program this stuff and be a lot more creative than simply buying a kit. So this completes our view, basic view of using a serial to parallel converter chip. Thanks for listening to the video. All right, looking at this video, um, it looks like the previous one where I used the microchip pick, but instead, um, this one uses the Arduino microcontroller. Um, observe on the right again, there is your bit pattern for your LED display. That's what it looks like in binary. And of course, on the upper left corner is the particular uh, seven segment decimal display. We're using the same 74C164 as before, but this time we're going to focus a little bit more in on the Arduino to get a closer look at it. All right, here's our Arduino. Um, it's the type uh, bare bones mini board from modern device. What I've done in this one, if you look on the right center of the screen, is I just um, soldered two jumpers to the power input, and this way I can plug right into the uh, plus five and ground of my proto board. In addition, it has uh, it plugs into one of these miniature type breadboards. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and power this down and give you a little closer view of what's going on. Uh, let's look off to our left a little bit. I'll have to move it. On our left here, is the RS-232 to Arduino interface board. They, you can also get those to go from USB 
to RS-232 or from USB straight into the board. I have both. Both work the same. Let's power it down so you can get a closer look at the Arduino board. As you can see here, this merely unplugs. I'm going to disconnect the plus and minus wires that power it up. What the blue board is, it's one of these little things. And these are rather neat. That's just a jumper. That's the two-line jumper that controls all of those LEDs and stuff to the serial chip. But I like this board because you can put in This board is just the right size, if you look at the pins on the bottom, that it will mate with one of these plug boards. Snap it together and you've got a ready place to plug in your other components. All right, we have an introduct we have our little introduction to serial ports and how useful they are, or that is um, serial to parallel chips. Uh, the next video I'll do on this series is going to be using the 74595. Now Arduino does have a library for that. Uh, I generally don't like using their libraries because I can't figure out what they're actually doing in case I want to use a different part. So I will uh, write my own code. The code for this particular setup and the diagrams will be posted up on my website. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, and until next time.